it came in very hungry. It was, um, it was actually a dredge, come off the dredge, couldn't, it was hard to get them off the dredge, faded back to the teaser, left the teaser, hit the short rigger, missed them on the short rigger, got them on the long rigger. Very aggressive fish. We had saw it the whole time and we're, we were excited about it, but we we're holding our composure, you know. And how did it start out? Like, what was the origin of the story? Too much alcohol. Really? Okay. <laughs> Because if God wanted us to have fiberglass boats, he would have given us fiberglass trees. It's it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit, as yeah. far as if I can remember uh -huh. correctly. <laughs> Welcome back to State of Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm Nick Carullo. Uh, no co-host tonight, Anthony Pino. Uh, is traveling to Dominican Republic, so we'll be without him tonight. But tonight, our guest is Derek Nelson from North Carolina, freelance mate. Uh, thanks for joining us, Derek. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Appreciate y'all having me on here. Yeah, appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, Derek, just tell us a little intro. Uh, tell us about yourself and uh, where you're from, where you came from. Um, I'm just turned 30. Not too long ago. Well, I guess not. I'm actually about to be 31 here in uh, July. But uh, yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't grow up in the, in the fishing scene, yet alone the sport fishing scene. Um, I'm from Manio, North Carolina, which is where Pirate's Cove is, uh, Wan Cheese. I mean, I grew up with all of these guys in the industry and with so many big names around me, and I was completely clueless to it. You know, in high school, I was chasing sports and other things uh, a lot more than fish, for sure. But um, I was a dock rat, you know, me and my brothers, we went fishing off the dock, downtown Manio and stuff, nowhere near boats. And uh, at, at this point, um, we're about 12 years into it, and um, I'm looking to step to the bridge here soon. So I've definitely climbed my ladder uh, pretty quick paired to some guys, and I've had a great time doing it. Nice, man. Awesome. And uh, so what, uh, how, how'd you first get into fishing? Um, like I said, I'm from Manio. I drove past Pirate's Cove my whole life looking at them big old nice shiny boats and big old long metal things hanging off of them. I was clueless to it, man. <laughs> I had no idea what riggers were, riggers lines and, and uh, just Carolina boats and, and the flare. Uh, I, I really got hooked in high school, I would say, seeing uh you know, pictures from my friends and whatnot. And then I, I moved down to Hatteras about an hour, hour and a half away. Um, call it the Wild West down there. A uh, lot of charter boats and fishing community, commercial boats. And I was working construction down there, you know, roofing and construction. There's only about three things. You work in a restaurant, you work construction, or you fish down there. Um, weren't much to do in the evenings. I ended up hanging out on the docks with the guys in the evening. Um, there was down there, they actually have boat boat cleaners boat washers you know you pay somebody a couple bucks wash your boat at the end of the day if you're tired that is truly how i got into it i was just looking to make some extra money and just hanging out with some really cool guys on the dock and next thing i know i was uh riding out for my first trip offshore i believe i was uh 19 years old well, but who's so, who's what was the first boat you rode out on the first boat i rode out on was the runaway with jay daniels um that was just riding along with a friend on the bridge. You know, he was definitely the first one to get me going. And then the first boat I actually got to go fishing with the guys, a bunch of the mates just wanted to go fishing, and it was the big tahuna. And that was my first time actually getting a reel in a fish and experience it. And, yeah, that was – it was unreal. Caught a wahoo. And to this day, a wahoo is my favorite fish. Not only yeah. eat, but to catch, leader, stick, get it in the boat safely, not hurt nobody. Is a yeah, number one fish. Nice. So that day you're probably pretty hooked from that day moving forward. Hooked, man. I couldn't think of nothing else. I, I had to do it. Um I, I got to where I was working construction during the day or the fish house, depending on the time of year. And I was going and washing boats in the evenings. So uh yeah, I mean I I was doing whatever I could to get my foot in the door and it slowly branched out to them guys slowly teaching me stuff right there at the dock and after a while I started riding out as a second mate and next thing I knew I was filling in and I it was about a, the next season I believe it was I had my first job right back on that boat to run away oh wow so that, they were the yeah. guys that kind of got your foot in the door and got you got you going down there at uh teaches lair in Hatters uh we call it, we used to call it the dirt dock so, okay. you know, a lot, a lot of docks are, you know, it's a dock and it's got concrete that goes to it or something like that or parking lot right there. 
well, this was a rock drive, rock driveway, and then a big old grass area, and then the dock. So our customers would always track on dirt onto our boats, paired to the other docks around. So we got the name Dirt Dock, and uh, and it just it really stuck, and it went. And we're the Dirt Dock crew over there at Teaches Lair. But uh, so how long uh, how long were we on that rig for? Ooh, that one actually did not last long. I started with them that winter bluefin, and that was my first time getting to catch a bluefin. And uh, I think I made it about halfway through the summer with them and I actually got fired from it. And this is where the freelancing really took back off for me because I was able to work around and experience other captains, other mates, how things were going on different boats. I wasn't only getting that one or two boats right there in my area or, you know, my dock partner talking with or just my boat. Now I was really, I had a little bit of skill. I, I had the bases but I was able to branch out and see other people's stuff and how they were rigging stuff and do it the same way they wanted it that day. So, uh, yeah, that, that it discouraged me at first, but at the same time, it helped me in the yeah. long run really discover what I was, where my passion for it and where I was best at. And truthfully, it was, uh, working around, you know, filling in for guys. Um, I've always enjoyed fishing with one person, but it's hard to find that person that you have good chemistry with and that you can put up with for 16 hours a day, 30, 40 days in a row for six months out of time. Yeah. So and at this time you're already, you're full time now. You're not doing the construction and stuff like you said, or nah, this, this, uh, so I don't get me wrong. I've had years where, you know, it, we're down here on an Island. Sometimes things get shut down. You got to do whatever you got to do to make it. So yeah. I am still, um, I, I can build a house. I can work on a car work on an engine, but my passion is out there in the ocean. It's where I find my, the most peace and it's where I feel I'm, I'm best at, you know? So I usually will sport fish during the summer. And then I'll go to commercial fishing and usually it's long line and for tunas and swords. And, um, this was my first in the uh, time for the family and stuff like that. Fishing is a uh, very demanding when you're doing it the way I'm doing it, flip flopping from commercial to sport fishing. Um, Talk a little bit about that. Uh, commercial fishing. Shoo. Commercial fishing, man. Like that's what I, I truly, truly love it because, okay. So charter fishing, I ain't gonna go too far into it, but you know, you have customers to deal with. Uh, and I love taking people fishing because it reminds me of when my first trips, yeah. I get to relive that. But there's nothing like going out in the ocean to do a job with some guys that you really enjoy fishing or working beside. And the commercial fishing, you know, there's two to four guys on the boat, on the size boat that I work on. And you're going out for a week to two weeks at a time and trying to load this boat down with, you know, as much tunas or swords as you can put on there, mahis, wahoos, whatever bites the hook, but usually it's tunas and swords. Um, I remember, I remember my first trip to now it's, oof, it was worse than, worse than the, the sport fishing, I would say, <laughs> because, uh, long lining is, it's long hours and it's very hard on the body. And I was not conditioned for it, but now I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a butcher on the boat. You know, I, I, I cut the fish up and package them. Um, I don't have to cook anymore since I've learned that trait. I'm not a cook. We, it's definitely, uh, it's not like charter fishing or sport fishing where we go out for the day. And a lot of times we're right back in the evening. We're out there for a few days. So somebody's got to, you know, usually a cook or you, you share the routine of it. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I don't have to cook no more. I'm sure the guys I fish with glad I don't have to cook either. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Well, any, yeah. any cool it's experiences like, or bad experiences out there? Uh, we'll see. Last year I, I, I broke my hand. I had a big eye. Um, you know, I'm down on my hands and knees, cold and wet, raining sideways on us. Um, gloves are filled up with water and you're still, you're working, you know, several hours in cutting fish, your hands are tired. Them guys are, they, don't get me wrong. They're up there doing work. They're tired too. But, um, I went, those, uh, about a, it's probably only 120 pounds. You know, it was, it was a nice one. Weren't a, weren't a huge one, a uh, big eye flopping on the deck. And I mean, it's my job to make sure that fish doesn't beat itself up. So as I uh, reach for it to, to end up hacking its head off, uh, as I'm reaching, its tail just popped my hand and ended up breaking two bones in my hand. And um, I had to work about another, I'd say about an hour and a half, two hours worth of cutting fish. And, um, yeah, it's just one of them experiences that sticks with you. You know, it's something I, I, I muscled through. I won't say there weren't some tears rolling down my cheeks, but, you know, it's just something that sticks with you. Um, 
on the bad side of things, you know, and, and luckily that's one of the worst ones, some of the worst I'll talk about on here. It's just from my own experience, but, um, upside, dude, like I said, there's just, there's nothing like that experience of guys that you enjoy working with and just being out there in the ocean, just doing a job. It's some people look and they see just plain blue and, you know, water and sky. There's just so much more to it. Once yeah. you're, once your your mind really gets set to being out there paired to seeing trees and leaves and grass. Yeah, yeah. So and how long is that you know, season? Uh, the, the best of it. I mean, truthfully, them guys will, will long line year round. And, um, same as, as sport fishing. I just, yeah. I can hop on a boat. I can, most of the time I get along with just about anybody. As long as we're all putting our heads down and going to work, it's, it's not a problem for me. So it's not like I'm with a set boat, but, uh, yeah, like I said, some of them guys will be doing it year round. Sometimes they'll switch up and uh, go drop netting during the summertime or shark fishing. But, um, a lot of the times the best of it is in the winter. So, gotcha. yeah. and, uh, so now you're, you're coming up. I guess now until some tournaments here pretty soon. Tournament season. Now that, that is the reason. So I was down in Hatters for uh, five years, at least getting going. And it was one of my last years down there when I got to actually fish a tournament down there. And I didn't win nothing, nothing like that. Nothing special happened, but you know, getting to see them guys and see them experience that it, it drew me in big time. And it was one of the reasons that I left Hatteras to move up to Oregon Inlet, which I'm originally from Mania, like I said. So it's kind of like a coming home, even though everybody thought I was from Hatteras, thought I was a Hatteras boy. Cause I got my start down there, but, uh, no, I'm, I was from Manio and, and, uh, yeah, I came in town, not necessarily beating on my chest, but I wanted to make a name for myself. So you know, I worked hard and fished a couple tournaments. Like I said, made a name for myself, showed that I could hang, and slowly made my way to Ocean City. And that's where we all dream of going. Yeah. So, for, you know, right here, keeping it in the States. So, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So, big, we know, uh, you know, you won a big tournament last year, right? I was fortunate enough for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. The right one slam, swam in the spread and just everything went right. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So, yeah, man. I've had, I've, I've been plucking at the pie now for, I'd say the last three years, I've been really fortunate to at least stand on the podium each year in a couple times for different tournaments. And uh, I mean, I knew it was just a matter of time and I knew I had to keep on competing in these tournaments if I wanted the chance at winning it. And um, it just, it, it came together. I, I didn't think it would happen this soon. Um, I definitely banked on, on uh, Donnie White and the Sea Wolf. You know, that's a single screw boat with my experience at this point. Um, once we're fishing, it's not about the speed. It's not about the looks. It's about how well that boat actually fishes at seven knots or whatever them low speeds you're trying to do. Prop wash, you know, making sure the boat's on a rattle trap. The captain, he knows what to look for. He's actually looking around and looking for them things, you know, not just leaving it up to the mate and rigging, but actually up there working. And uh, yeah, man, I banked right. I, you know, I just had a feeling that I had a uh, like I said, I've been a freelance mate. I've usually always sold myself to the highest bidder since I've gotten into the tournaments or the boat I was already originally working on. And this year it was uh it was just it was a 20 knot boat with one engine, less prop wash, go out there with a, a captain that knew what to look for. And yeah, it worked out for me. So, yeah, talk and I'm, talk about let's talk about that experience when you won. Um, you know, what, shoo. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm sitting here like uh, already jittery. Just, yeah, just, yeah. just, I mean, yeah. what everyone dreams of winning that one for sure. Um, what day was that? What day was that? So, uh, that was a two, I believe it was Tuesday that we caught that fish and it held all week long. And that was the most nerve wracking part. So no matter what, and we fished some nasty days in that tournament and tournaments before, um, but going out and having, we didn't fish Monday. We, we laid Monday and we fished Tuesday. It was our oh, first so day. It was the first day. <laughs> first day for us. Right. And we had to fish all through the week knowing that everybody, there was a lot of other people at first days and everybody else had to fish that week. So it was, it was pretty nerve wracking. I hadn't felt that much pressure. You know, I'm, I do well with the pressure going into the tournament, knowing these guys are putting a lot of money on me and, and the boat. And, you know, you want things to go right. You, I perform all summer long for these tournaments, hoping that once – you know, charter season adds up to my tournaments and, you know, making all the right steps and rigging and everything else. But having a winning fish early in the week and uh, 
seeing how, you know, Wolverine and the guys got beat out by a hundred pounds on a, a grander fish, two granders coming in. Like you just don't see it in tournament. And my little white Marlin held all through the week. It was nerve wracking. But once it was, did over, you guys know when you hooked that fish that that was, that was going to be the fish. That was, yeah. And then there was, of course, you know, everybody wants to play on the radio coming in. Oh yeah. We got a good one too. We got a good one. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, we saw it when it came in very hungry. It was, um, it was actually a dredge come off the dredge. Couldn't as hard to get them off the dredge, faded back to the teaser, left the teaser, hit the short rigger, missed them on the short rigger, got them on the long rigger. Very aggressive fish. We had saw it the whole time and we're, we were excited about it, but we we're holding our composure, you know, our, uh, between me and Donnie, um, we also had another captain on there, Charlie Griffin, that was experienced eye. You know, we see it, we, we, we see it, but our, our, our customers are sometimes a owners clientele they don't they don't really see it they don't they don't know what to look for they don't know the sizes so we're trying to hold our composure for them but we're staying like, giving each other the head shake like yeah be be ready this one gets close we're taking it no no questions and uh yeah when the time came man it just the fish came to us it was just everything everything just worked out you know i've had so many other other situations where you're you're fighting for it you got tangles you got this and that and you somehow end up with it this one just it worked out it was a perfect angler on the fish he was strong the seas weren't bad everything was just there that's awesome man so it was it, was, was, it must have been a good experience. experience coming in coming to hang that fish huh it was it was an experience like no other i i truly hope to relive it again soon but i mean i know i've gotta i've gotta go out there and fish just like everybody else and wait my turn again well, that's but, good, man. That's... i mean you know when they all say we're going to disney world after they you know they used to win the ball games i mean it was it was it was a, definitely a highlight in my life, and um, it was a nice one to bring back home, a win for the guys back here and, you know, the small-town boys that, that come from single-screw boats with, you know, working with the, I wouldn't say the bare minimum, but, you know, every every dollar matters. You know, we don't we don't just chunk a ballyhoo over at the end of the day. We save it for dolphin bait. You know, the reels might not always be spooled all the way up. We're only working with six instead of eight, so uh, it was it was it was a surreal event it was the first year i mean this was not putting donnie's operation down but it was the least i had to work with since i've started tournament fishing and we pulled it out off of skill and just you know dedication to the ocean knowing what to look for and and going hard at it being prepared that's it man being prepared no oh, um, so no so i right, so tell uh so now he's coming into tournament season now what uh what's the next What's summer look like for you now? Oh, summer's going to be a slow start. Um, we're still working on getting the boat out of the boat yard. She needed a lot of love. Um, we've got a name picked out. We're going to be the backing up, B-A-C-K-I-N. Uh, or I'm sorry, not backing up. That's a boat here. Back in black. Back the boat is uh yeah the boat's wrapped with black. So back in black. You know, ACD song, ACD song always was a good one, and it just it just rolls. All right, and so um, this is uh this is the old sea wolf right the old sea wolf yep it's got the same um two owners uh tony and billy really great guys um very solid and yeah so looking to be a little bit more low-key than what the old sea wolf the old black boat used to be but we're still gonna go fishing just as hard and you know try to really deliver a good good charter scene to folks so I'm very passionate about charter fishing, taking people fishing, and um, I've done good in the cockpit by taking care of my people. So hopefully I'll be able to offer the same thing from the bridge. Yeah. So tell us about that. I mean, that's a big transition uh, for you. So, you know, tell us how that this transition is, you know, has been for you. Man, huge step. So, uh, you know, I've been, been told to go acquire my captain's license for a long time. I'm very mechanically inclined. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm very good boat maintenance. Um, but I just acquired my, my captain's license, um, this, not this winter, winter four. And, uh, I took a job actually at the beginning of this summer on an inshore boat and under the, uh, under the agreement that I get to do all my tournaments. So I actually lose this job. You know, any guys that want to get discouraged out there about getting fired or anything like that, I mean, it, it, it goes with it. It's, it's, it's hard grounds. We all have life going on and you have to smile every single day for new customers and to ensure them they have a good time. 
But uh, just getting back into it, I ended up losing this job because I went to fish that tournament. I got a text message that Monday. Then that day we were laying, I was gearing up my boat for this big last tournament of the season and um, ended up catching a fish that Tuesday. So obviously things were just meant to be. Like yeah. I said, it was an inshore job. It's just, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, I showed up there every day with a smile. I, I did my best, blah, blah, blah. But um, obviously it weren't meant to be. And offshore is more of my passion anyways. That's where I know I'm best at. So transitioning truthfully to the bridge is, uh, I, it's more of just fishing from up there for me now. Um, boat maintenance wise, I've always been one of the guys that I didn't mind help getting down there and helping my captain with oil changes and, and taking care of my engine room or whatever it may be. You know, it used to be the saying, no, uh, no oil on the mate, no blood on the captain. Uh, that doesn't necessarily work these days, you know. So it'll be more of just, you know, running the boat, running a, a operation, booking my trips, which as a freelance mate, I've been doing anyways. I've been bringing trips to people's boats or people that just want to fish with me, whether I have a boat or not that I'm working with, you know, we'll go to other boats. So it's not really a problem. It's just more of fishing from the bridge now. And, uh, you know, remembering not to constantly uh, look forward or backwards, but I've, I've got to be on the 360 now. So you know, I've got to make sure I'm keeping check on my mate and also not running into a boat in front of me while looking to the sides for some fish jumping or something. Yeah. But otherwise, um, I'm, I'm truly, I'm excited about it. I'm not stressing it. I know I've got two great guys behind me um, at the, the owners of the boat looking for a mate around here. There's, there's tons of guys that want a job, whether they're actually have a little skill set or not, you know, there's, there's, but we're a fishing community. So somebody will come up in that spot. I'm not really stressing much. Uh, it's all about getting the boat here at this point and getting underway. Gotcha. And then, so I'm guessing yeah. you, you have a pretty good relationship with the two owners. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I met them through Donnie, you know, me and Donnie uh, started fishing together a few years back. Like I said, just filling in, you know, the guys, you know, they get in a pinch or something like that. I'll come fill in for them for a week or just even a day. Um, or, you know, guys getting tired or whatnot. So that's how I got lined up with Donnie. And uh, I met met Tony probably three, four years ago. I have not actually shook hands with Billy yet, one of the owners. Um, but, yeah, Tony's great, a great guy. Just, I mean, you know, very family-oriented, Got has his kids, brings kids fishing. Um, awesome angler. I watched this guy fight a big guy for, I think it was like close to five hours. We're in a tournament. I think wow. it was the, the White Marlin Open this year. I mean, to watch somebody with that kind of stamina, it was also on a, a, a TLD. So if that wow. tells you something, I think it was TLD 30 <laughs> and, uh, you know, light line. It was the end of the day. So we we're like, whatever, we'll, we get it, we get it. And it was, it was a nice size fish. You know, it could have maybe done something for us. But the odds of getting that size of a fish up beside the boat, it was very slim. But Tony, he still fought through it the whole time, man. I mean, it was, it was inspirational. You know, he came out of there with blisters and on parts of your fingers that you don't even think you can get them. I mean, his back was worn out. I mean, I can't say he, he did much for us the next day other than piling the couch and he was there for moral support, but he was, he was whooped after that battle. So to, to know I've got that behind me and, you know, we get the right fish on to know I've got him down there in the cockpit as an angler, you know, it just makes me more, even more excited about it. Yeah. And what, uh, do they, do they fish tournaments with, with you guys, the owners, or you get more char chartered out for that? So Tony, definitely, he'll usually buy a spot or two, um, especially depending on what tournaments we fish. Um, this year, uh, I'm going to try to make it to the Big Rock. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm going to. I know I've probably got people for it, but just lining stuff up and scheduling. But I know I'll make it up to Ocean City. I'm pretty sure he'll fish those with us, and I'll be selling other spots, which are pretty much already sold. But, yes, mostly chartering out to – to whatnot so he doesn't take the whole boat for himself gotcha we actually won with the the mr ducks uh family on there this year one for the white marlin or the mid-atlantic oh. all right and the boat boat's still in the yard right now boat boats in the yard hoping it'll be out at the end of this month beginning of april um i i'm i'm definitely pushing i'm hopefully gonna be riding up there um here in the next couple of days hopefully at the latest by next week to start pushing myself. I don't, you know, how it is in a boat yard. You, you go there and you just park your boat. They're not going to, they're not going to work on it. They're going to work on 
who's there standing watching them work. So Absolutely. I'm about ready to go there and just put my hands on my hips. Like, what's up guys? You know, I don't know how to do that. I'll go start doing this, but you know, get me out of here. So the season needs to get underway. It's going to be, it's going to be tight season to make, to make money this year, especially for uh, boat owners and just the, the whole business in itself with fuel being as high as it is. But, you know, I'm putting myself on a single screw boat. That's where I want to be anyway. So my fuel burn will be, should be lower than everybody else's anyways. <laughs> so profit margin should be a little bit better. Nice. Well, I'm pretty sure yeah. I'm pre you're probably pretty excited to get going and kind of run your own operation now. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, it's, it's a little surreal. I've had a lot of high and lows over the last couple of days and um, running my own rig is definitely one of the highs. And I've been trying to really just keep myself concentrated on that. And, you know, it's a lot of these guys, you know, Donnie, Donnie, uh, he gave me a compliment on not having to look back, not having to worry about what was going on behind his back down there in the cockpit. I mean, so I'm, I'm ready to teach somebody what I know and be able to step to the bridge and look away. So that's, that's a really exciting part for me to, to get to experience and knowing what I know from down there and getting to use it up top. A lot of, a lot of the old timers that, you know, when I was first getting my start and how they're telling me to, hey, man, you know, and I'm asking them, how, how, how do I do this? And, hey, just get on the dock and hang out. These guys, you know, all, I offer to wash the boat, offer to do this, do that, and eventually they'll pick you up and help. And there's a saying that, you know, a lot of the, the, the best captains were the best mates or, or were mates at one point. They know the cockpit. They know that, that, that area of the boat very well, and they step to the bridge. So there's not, um, and I, and I have, I fished with captains that, that had never been the cockpit a day in their life. They, they, they bought a boat and they went fishing and they made a business out of it. Yeah. Not that they, they weren't good fishermen, but they just, they weren't well-rounded to know that side of it. So I'm excited to have that. I'm excited to have started from where I started at and stepping to where I'm going. And, um, I know that, I know that my foundation is very solid. Yeah. So the excitement is through the roof on that end of, of life. And I'm, I'm sure you'll inspire a lot of younger guys, you know, where you're from and, you know, what, what words of advice would you give to some younger guys, you know, maybe trying to get into the game and kind of, you know, start where maybe they didn't have a start like some of these other guys. Ooh, definitely. Like I said, man, I did not grow up doing this one bit. None of my family fishes. I am a first generation fisherman for my family. I still shock people to this day when I tell them what I I do and yeah. when they knew I was from my youth so totally 360 for me um, or 180 I guess other direction just you know doing doing what I do now to get into this or just making a change in life overall man don't be shy change your change your settings you know if you're if you're working in the business world or office world inside job and you want to be outside well guess what you got to go outside to find that if you want one of these boat jobs you got to start hanging out in the docks you got you can't be scared to uh, sacrifice some time in the evenings. Um, guys with, with wives and girlfriends, it's going to be tough. <laughs> Families, it's going to be tough for sure. Um, you, you've got to really, you've, you've got to live the lifestyle. You have to have your family there with you. You have to incorporate it all. It's not one of them things that you just pick up and you put down. Um, the guys that do that, they don't last. They, they're, they're around for a season and they're gone. So I mean, if you want to get into sport fishing or commercial fishing, just go around the docks. There's always good help is, is always needed. Um, just, you know, leave the drama at home. You know, this is a long, a long, long day. You, you have to put on a smile, you deal with a lot of drama and, and at home, you have to be able to leave it at the dock. If not, you will not make it. Guys won't put up with you. So and you, biggest you thing family, though is just yeah. getting out there. Go ahead. Go ahead. The uh, biggest thing is just, just putting yourself out there, not being yeah. afraid to walk up and, and shake somebody's hand. So nobody will know you if you're, you're just messaging on online or just calling, you have to go put yourself there in person and show them that you are serious. Yeah. I started off, I, I, I used to get seasick <laughs> just about every single day at one point. So my body did not like it and, and guys knew it, but um, I kept going. I kept applying myself. I kept showing up to the dock. So that was the biggest, biggest difference that I had along the guys that didn't make it, I guess, or just fished one season or two and then quit. Yeah. And uh, you got a family, right? So how to, right? You got a little yes, I do. I've got, I've got a little boy named Banks and a little girl named Adina. Awesome. Uh, and I've been a father just about as long as I've been fishing. Um, I've got a few years, I say, in the industry where um, 
I was doing like crabbing or working at fish house, something like that, washing boats, blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't say my uh, fishing career really took off till 2015. That's when things got really serious. I really, really applied myself at a captain named Kenny Kochi on a boat called the Finnegan. Um, you know, very family oriented. You know, I've had my kid there all the time. It, it, you know, like I said, I really, really indulged myself into the life and, and really, I wasn't just there for work. I started, it was, it was my life. It was lifestyle. So kids is, is really tough. Um, it's tough on, on relationships with, with, um, you know, a girlfriend or, or some of the girls in it and some of the women in the industry, their, their husbands, you know, you're gone for a lot, long period of time. When you do get home, you're tired. Um, you know, charter fishing here, my day, my day starts anywhere from three 30 to four 30, depending on what time of year it is. And then, uh, you know, once I get to the boat, it's, it's, it's running full fledged all day long. You fish from four or starting anyways, getting up 4 a.m. And you don't get home till 5, 6 a.m. sometimes or p.m., sometimes 7. Um, and you're just totally drained. You know, you get home and you barely eat, shower, and, and you're passed out. So it's very, very tough in the summertime with family and uh yeah you just have to you have to really incorporate them and 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 hopefully they're supporting of you doing it yeah. uh, and that's that can be a tough one too for sure Absolutely. we all we all see the the tournament times and and hear some of the stories and stuff like that you know and, and sometimes it's tough for guys to to withdraw their self from the scene uh separating you know the pleasure from the work um it kind of all runs hand in hand so sometimes you gotta be gotta gotta know when to pull them throttles back and that's a that's a huge one huge one but kids man I, I don't there's nothing better than taking kids offshore fishing too that is for sure. Everything is new to them. They're not like adults and uh, just, I don't know, adults get bored. They take their naps. Kid takes <laughs> naps because they're actually tired or they're yeah, seasick. Yeah. But uh, kids are just constantly looking around. And, um, you know, my son, it's been, it's been a great experience to take him fishing, not, not growing up going fishing myself with, you know, at, at his age. Yeah. So it's been great. I, I wouldn't change a single thing. I've, um, you know, some guys ask me why I haven't traveled. I haven't, I've stayed right here in my backyard the whole time. I haven't gotten to make the Mexico trips and get the 50 shots a day at Billfish. Um, I've stayed right here for my kids. I mean, it's just some of the sacrifices I guess you have to make. You know, the guys are hanging out in the evenings, having a couple beers. You know, you've got to go ahead and tuck tail and head on home. Yeah. And uh, I made, made it sound a little worse than it is right then. Some of the times I was running from them guys. I was ready to go home. Yeah, Tired, yeah. be over it. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. And uh, so one question we always, you know, we ask all our guests is, uh, you know, one moment doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be a tournament win, even though we, you know, we, we, you know, you told us about your incredible tournament win, but uh, you know, one moment that, you know, you're just makes you think like why you kind of, you do what you do, you wake up at three 30 and it's kind of, you know, the reason, you know, why you love it. Uh, truthfully, I know, and I was never, you know, I'm just going, just going to, go in on, on the waking up early part. Cause I was never one to want to wake up early. I was always late for school. I lived a quarter mile from high school and I was late every day. We didn't have to be to high school till eight 30. Good <laughs> God. I was late every single day. My mother is shocked that I am a fisherman and I do what I do. And I wake up at the times that I wake up and the hours I work, but, uh, that sunrise, man, you know, I hate to be a, a chick on social media right now or something. <laughs> post a sunrise. I don't post many pictures of sunrise, but getting to experience that every morning, you know, even, even some of the crappy mornings when, when it's not as good, just knowing that, that I got up this morning with the sun, like, you know, it just, it sets the whole mood for the day. It's, it's fishing has done more than just support a family for me. It's, it's really helped me grow as a man and, and understand life. And that, that morning, morning ride out, that commute to work, that, that sunrise that we get to experience that a lot of people are sleeping right through that I used to sleep right through. So it, it, I wouldn't say it's the reason I do what I do every single day, but man, it makes it a lot easier. It makes yeah. it nice. It, it's, 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 it's awesome. It's awesome to look down there to your people and say, Hey, peek around the corner, check that out. And I mean, it's just water that goes to sky. There's, there's nothing intruding it. There's, there's nothing in the way of it. There's no buildings, there's no trees. There's, you know, it's, it's a different kind of beauty that people don't get to see and experience that pictures and, and 
drawings, no, no matter what it is, how it's taken, it's just, it doesn't truly capture it. I highly enjoy that for sure. I mean, I, I could go on and on, but um, yeah, that sunrise riding out in the mornings and seeing a sunset. I've also, I enjoy overnight fishing. Um, down here, we'll offer 36 hour trips, which is basically two days and one night of fishing. We don't come in, we stay out the whole time and seeing that, seeing that sunset on the ocean. Uh, once again, these are stuff I've, I grew up here my whole life, but I was never in the boating community. We never went boating and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's all, I wouldn't say it's, it's new to me at this point, but it's still, it's, it's every day. It's just a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a new adventure for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I still, I still enjoy it. I'm still passionate about it. Oh, that's so, good, man. So it keeps you going. You know, for sure. For sure. And those, the, the guys told me, you know, one of my, uh, one of my, two of my greatest friends have always said it, Kenny Kochi and Brian Austin, like, you know, you, you, the, the money will not make you stay here. The passion will make you stay here and it'll keep a smile on your face. You know, a lot of these guys, they, you know, we're getting paid to take people fishing. Come on, man. I mean, that's a dream job. I'm sure we're not flying fighter jets, but it's a dream <laughs> job, you know? So it's like, I, it's, it's hard to see some people get as sour as they do um doing this this work and uh once again another reason i stay a freelance fisherman i only have to deal with the salty one so long and then i'm right back on my way but, yeah but uh, moving forward yeah. now you're not really much of a freelance guy anymore are you no no and uh i mean if anything i've kept myself a freelance guy it gives me time for my kids and whatnot in the summertime i've uh i've as as passionate as i am about fishing and want to do it every single day i want to be out there I know I can't catch fish from land, not, not the ones I want to catch, not the ones that, that keep me stepping ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm no bass fisherman, man. I suck at bass fishing. I have <laughs> the patience. I just, I don't have that right touch, I guess, but um, I respect them for what they do. But yeah, the ones I got to catch, I got to go, I got to get offshore for them. Yeah. So nice, bro. Well, uh, what else? Say anything else you'd like to add or share with us? Uh, phew, man. Um, I don't know. I've got a couple notes right here jotted down. Yeah. Um, as a, 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 if you want to be a good mate, um, I, I, I definitely, I, I consider myself a good mate. There's some people out there that consider me one of, one of the top guys doing it. Um, but just some little insight, um, attention to detail. Like um, I met guys that would literally flip their, uh, their handles around. So if a fish came in, they were ready to crank down on it, you know, constantly watching, your drag levers, you know, people that, that aren't used to going out there and being tossed around and everything else, they easily knock that stuff down. So, I mean, and sometimes one fish is all you get the shot at. You've got to make that one fish count. So there isn't days where you're going out there and you're meat wagon every day and you can lose 10 fish because you done caught 50 of them. So, you know, making them count, attention to detail. Um, don't be afraid to, if somebody is teaching you something that you know is wrong, and you have a better way of doing it, learn the wrong way. <laughs> Let the wrong way play out. It will show you the reason not to do it ever again. So I've had countless arguments with guys or captains sometimes, not, not that I argue with my captain or go too far. They are the captain. They get their way. But, you know, just, just uh, disputing my end of it. But, uh, you know, give them what they want, even if you know it's wrong. It costs you a fish sometimes. It hurts. It sucks. But it's like, well, that's why I didn't want to do it that way. So, and yeah. don't be afraid to test it. You know, you're sitting there at the dock. You done rigged your bait. You got an extra 20, 30 minutes. Tie some knots and pull on them. You know, uh, you're snailing or uh, even, um, I don't, I don't personally like to use chafe tubing anymore. I use a clover hitch or a cat's paw. Somebody might cause it. So the line's doubled up there, but um test it, pull on it. You know, don't, don't, don't just take somebody's word that this way is stronger. I, tournament time is, is, is unreal for the different stuff that you will see people doing. I mean, noted these guys were all coming from different parts of the world in, in aspects. And so you'll see a bunch of different stuff going on, but um, everybody's got the strongest way in this way. And some of the strongest knots for me have been simple, the simple stuff, you know, I'm not sitting here tying the Australian and, and this and that. I'm just you know, hitting a bimini and making sure everything is right within that bimini and it holds. So test your stuff. Not don't 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 just take somebody's word on it. 
You know, you have to get the experience and you can get a little bit from the dock and not just out only out there in the ocean. You definitely have to go fishing, but some of the things are done right there at the dock. There's a lot of uh, background work. I uh, like it. Yeah, I hope I, I, I mean, I hope I left y'all with something good. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm totally in my prime right now. I've, uh, I've, I've spent more time in the gym than, than working on a boat or out in the ocean over the past couple months. So, uh, I know I, I took, put some notes down here for myself, but, um, yeah, man, just get out there and chase it. You know, a lot of guys, they, they sit down on the fish box. Don't sit down, okay. keep going rod to rod, work your spread, reel some stuff in, check your baits, you know, Valley who's sometimes only, only last 10 minutes in hot water, you know, every 15 minutes in, in cold water, you should be checking them just because. Yeah. So work your bait, show your people as a charter fisherman, show your people that you're working that boat. You're not just have your hand out at the end of the day, getting to go fishing, you know, make it, it's a, it's a job. If you, if you're doing it correctly, you're tired at the end of the day, if you're doing it correctly, you're not wanting to sit on the dock, drinking a bunch of beers and eating. You want to drink water, get some real fuel in your body and get some sleep and do it again in the morning. Nice man. Uh, Great stuff, dude. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I do. I, yeah, I we'll appreciate y'all uh... reaching out to me big time. Yeah, we'll get you, uh, you know, may, maybe after later in the year, after, you know, you get that time running, running the boat, you know, we'll get you back on. You could tell us, you know, how that's been. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll bring you all some of my failed moments or something. <laughs> we'll take, all, <laughs> we'll, we'll take them all. Yeah, bro. But man, hey, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know how y'all's recommendations go. But um, like I said, I'm really great friends with Brian Austin. He has been a awesome person to me in this sport fishing world and industry and very knowledgeable from not only the mate standpoint, but the captain standpoint. Um, this guy's been in the industry, I'd say at least 10, 15 years longer than I have. And um, yeah, he's actually starting his own uh, custom uh, tackle business and trying to slow down a little bit on the fishing, you know, with age, it just starts to hurt. But um, I mean, just the, the knowledge that he has and um it's just one of them guys that i've always bounced stuff off of we've always played with ideas and and uh tested things together so i know that he would be a great one to have on y'all's podcast and has a lot of knowledge to share and also um i mean he's probably one of the uh so i wasn't actually around when he was a charter fisherman and, uh, I mean, I've known him to be a hustler and he'll go and, uh, fish with, you know, anybody and, and go have a good time. But, um, probably one of the best private boat mates you could ever speak to just on boat maintenance. Um, uh, I mean, just every aspect of care of it, actually being able to paint and, you know, uh, not, not just like bottom paint, but actually paint a boat, which is, you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot that goes into that, um, inside customization i mean you know the guy he just he just has it he's a very very big name in the industry in my eyes and um i i would very much not like him to be overlooked for sure because he is very skilled and is one of the ones that's been alongside me for my journey in this awesome man but, yep once again you know i think that pretty much covers it for me i mean unless y'all unless you got something else i know i can i can ramble on for days a lot of times <laughs> No, that was great, dude. You said a lot of good things, man, and uh, I think it's gonna be a good one for sure. I was about to say it's just it'll, it'll, it'll be great to get back on here again after I've got a season of of running a, a my own offshore operation, and because um, I know I know I have me a few hiccups, but I don't know. Very excited about it. Hey, it comes very, with very the job, about dude. It. it comes. Yeah, you know. and I've been I've I've been big on on sharing my uh my whole adventure in this, you know, I, I run the page of mate's life on Instagram and uh, a lot of it, it started out as just, you know, sharing every step of it, you know, a couple of my first big fish to this and that, to mistakes that I made, to helping other guys, you know, you know, uh, train it. Just one of the biggest things everybody wants to gaff with just their dominant hand. Um, one of the things I would definitely push on my boat or any boat I get on or anybody I'm working with, um, I've definitely, as a freelance mate, I've went and taught a lot of other mates and, and helped them get started in the industry or whatnot. And I'm a right-handed, I can gaff with my left hand. If I go to the right side of the boat, um, I'm gaffing that fish with my left hand. Whichever hand is on the back side of the leader, that's the one you want to use to, to give you ultimate control over the situation and over the fish. So just, you know, things like that and, and uh, you know, it makes a difference. Attention to detail. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, 
You're like a point guard out there. <laughs> you got to be, you know, hey, and it's charter fishing is about making that dollar. You, you lose that one fish. I can tell you, you catch a hundred fish that day. They only yeah. think about that one fish you lost. So yeah, I've, uh, uh, getting as consistent as you can be and everybody loves gaffing, but for some reason they don't want to make it hard on themselves and use that left hand. And after a while, I mean, it, it, it might take you a few. I, I can't say I haven't lost a few gaffs, um, lost a few <laughs> fish, but at this point, my left hand is just as good as my right hand. You know, I can't yeah. say I can rig a ballyhoo backwards like that, but gaff, when it comes to gaffing and leader and a fish, yeah. And you want that. That's, that's, yeah. yeah. It's only going to make you more consistent. Absolutely. I always tell people, man, it's, it's finesse, man. You gotta, it's a sport just like anything else. You gotta have finesse. For sure. For sure. Them big, heavy You look days, good doing so. it or you could look shitty doing it. <laughs> yeah. I say, hey, I was about to say, I know a lot of good mates. I see them posting these videos and they're on that side of the boat and they're, they're doing that crossover thing. And it does not work. I actually have a, a good friend down there in Hatters. I actually posted a, a picture on it and um, and what happened. And it, he had uh, he had gaffed a wahoo, and he was he was crossed up. So he he had his uh, he had his. Let's just say we're on the the left side of the boat. We're on the starboard side. If you're looking back, it's going to be the left yeah. side. And and he's uh, well, I just put it in my right hand right then, but we're going to cross up. I'm left hand <laughs> dominant. So I'm leadering with my right hand now, and the guys will try to gaff with their, with their stronger hand, which I'm left handed all of a sudden. And when he did that and he brought that fish in the boat, he couldn't shake his right hand. He didn't have enough room. And so what he did was he actually pulled the fish off of the gaff, and that wahoo, the razor sharp teeth stacked on each other like like scissors, just brushed his arm, and it ended up splitting him up, splitting him open from his elbow up here to his wrist. Luckily, it wasn't on the bottom side, or he probably would have been bleeding out. And um, I mean, it was deep enough to where you saw white white ligaments parts that more more wasn't good. And he had to he had to sit some time out, but um, just things like that, you know, if he would have had his hands the right way, that most likely wouldn't have happened. Can't say it wouldn't have, but he had more of a chance of it not happening. Yeah. So, yeah, man, you got to be careful out there. For sure. Um, I've I've been fortunate enough to, you know, that big eye break in my hand was about one of the worst of it. I've taken a fall and, and knocked a tooth out and my jaw hit the counter. Um, I've given myself a concussion. I got, I was up in the V berth running out one day. I was on Sandra D with Mike Merritt and we were running out and took a wave and I was down in the, uh, down in the V-berth getting some rods out of rod closet and got tossed up into the door jam and uh, had a pretty good concussion that day. I still fish, but my first few hours I was, I was a little out. Mike, Mike could tell I was moving a little slow, but um, yeah, that, that ocean can be dangerous, man. I've, you know, some, some people's stories I only want to tell because it's their story. And, but I mean, things, things happen quick. You know, we, we, we just all experienced this, uh, this, this loss of life down there in Florida, that, that gang down there fishing and, you know, guy dove over for his girlfriend and, and he's no longer with us. And, you know, things just, they, they, they happen quick. So you have to be protecting yourself at all times and, and being a good mate. That's another thing, protecting, you know, your customers. They're not used to rocking and rolling and, and trying to be as active as that as we are you know if you talk to a lot of them the next day they are sore from from just going fishing and it's just from all the moving around so making sure that your customers are okay you see one go to the bathroom and they haven't been back out of it you know you go down bottom and you easily get seasick from just everything being enclosed and rocking around so going down there and checking on them i've had multiple customers get stuck in the in the uh in the head literally not being able to get themselves out and i had to go out and go down there and drag them out of there and get them some fresh air so um i had a girl this past big rock season um you know party the night before got on the boat dehydrated thought she was gonna do the same thing end up fainting on us you know thought we we're gonna have to call her day early and uh so you know just just keeping aware of, of of your people keeping an eye on them making sure they're drinking enough water you know as the as the mate you're not you're not there to party you know the party can can be once you finish your stuff at uh once you hit the dock you have to be very aware of your of your clientele you know a lot of these people are uh as a charter mate some of these guys are are working nothing but office jobs and this is their one time a year or or construction or whatever it may be inland you know they're yeah. not near the ocean this is their one time a year to go fishing so they're gonna they're gonna cut a little loose you know and it's a good time sometimes but like i said you gotta gotta watch them make sure they stay in the boat make sure they don't you know or start a fight i've had 
that happened before. Uh, I've had have seen a, a boat back in with a guy hog tied on deck. So he got a little drunk and got a little mouthy. So you know, <laughs> if 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 as the mate, if you could have, hey man, why don't you why don't you go eat something? You know, and 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 that's it's not our job to really demand anything out of these people or or push them around because it's it's our boat. We're the ones when they're working, taking care of it. No, it's their boat for the day. But we got to make sure they respect the boat and they respect us and the time on it. Sometimes you got to get a little, you know, got to poke your chest out a little bit and say, hold up now. I'm the more experienced one here. Look, just go take a break. And, uh, that's, that's, uh, I'd say my first years getting into it, I had, did not have that at all. I didn't, didn't know how I was supposed to operate, but once you get into it, you, you start, start learning them things and they only help you more. The, the other guys usually appreciate it because they don't want to tell them no. And, you know, it, it just sounds a little bit better coming from the mate or the captain. Just, Hey man, just calm down a little bit, you know, let's, let's keep it, keep it a little bit cleaner. So. Yeah. Good stuff. And, uh, yeah, since you brought it up, you know, thoughts and prayers, to uh, that Oturo family and crew and everybody. Big time, man. So that's tough. It's very yeah, tough. It's, it's a tough one for sure for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I had a I had a trip. I, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna name no no names no boats. But I was out there commercial fishing. This was I think this was before 2015. I want to say it was probably 2014 or so. Out there wintertime commercial fishing, and we had just got done setting our our long line gear in the water just for. A little info, this long line gear is probably about 30 grand worth of gear that we put into the water. And it takes us, I would say, four hours, six hours to set it in the water. And it can take up to eight to 16 hours hauling it back, depending on how many fish are on it. So as soon as we got done setting it, another boat was beside us setting. A call come over to radio and uh, the, the mates, one of the mates' sons had, uh, had an accident that morning and had died. And a uh, young boy, probably 17, 18 years old. You know, I thought I was probably, uh, I weren't much older. So it was really like, wow, you know, but I had my own son of my own at the time coming up and it, it really opened my eyes to how far I was from home and how far I was from help. And we, we ended up hopping on the other end of that gear with them, that, that other boat and all that stuff up. But just knowing that that guy had to haul that gear up with that on his mind or the captain had to haul that gear up with it on his mind, knowing that he had to tell his mate something was nearly wrong because eventually you have to tell him that something's going on. You're all of a sudden hauling all your stuff back up and you're heading in fishing as soon as you get there. So that one has kind of stuck with me. And uh, it really makes me, when something happens, it makes my heart hurt because I know how far away we are from home and we are from help. And um, it can be, it can be tragic, man. It can, it can really hurt and it can really stick with you. So yeah, my heart goes out to anybody that deals with something out there in that ocean. And, you know, I hope you, you seek out the help you need if you need it. And don't be afraid to keep going out there. Some of us, that's where peace is found for us. So um, I hope that I hope them guys get back out there and, and you know, they they keep chasing it. Cause I'm sure it's going to hurt a little bit. Yeah. It can be tough out there. Awesome How about you? When's your season get going again? Uh, well, we're – Sailfish and sailfish seasons uh almost coming to an end here. Uh, You're down April, Florida, right? Florida, yeah. Sailfish season's almost over, but it's like the best sailfish season we've had so far. Or best of our season right now, late in the year. You know, we haven't really had the cold fronts uh, push a bunch of those fish down like we normally do, and uh, fishing yeah. just seems to be later and later every year. But uh, yeah, but it's good. And then you know, get ready. Uh, you know, come May, we'll go to the Bahamas and, you know, chase some blue ones and white ones. There you go. Y'all head to Ocean City or y'all stay over there? Uh, a lot of, I mean, I know a lot of the guys head up, you know, Ocean City, uh, you know, last few years, boat I'm on, we kind of stayed down south, uh, Bahamas, Dominican Republic. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I have not, uh, like I said, I haven't gotten a chance to travel yet, but um, if this COVID mess wouldn't have happened, I was actually ready. It was that th these years were going to be my first ones doing it, or I guess I should say this year, this past winter. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to hold out a little bit longer to the whole shot thing gets sort of, uh, figured out. I'm not, not against everybody with it and, you know, <laughs> do whatever you want, your body. But um, yeah, I'm just going to hold out a little bit longer. And, no, but my I'm, kids I'm are older. My kids are old enough. <laughs> Yeah, my son's old enough anyways where I can I can send for a flight for him or whatnot. So 
you know, and uh, FaceTime and whatnot is, is great these days to keep everybody in, in contact. So, yeah, I'm, I'm about ready to travel. I'm ready to go experience what you, you fellas are seeing over there and actually catch a, catch a billfish or any kind of fish with a mountain in the background. That is yeah. that is one it's of my a, goals. Yeah, it's a cool, cool experience. Yeah, it's a cool experience. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I always I always hit somebody. You know, get hit, hit them with the clap when they, when I see that one. I'm like, yeah, I'm coming <laughs> one day. My my dream. I'm I'm not gonna quit. Uh, I'm not gonna give up on the the cockpit. Uh, in, until I get to go wire a black marlin. After I get, I want to go to Australia bad. I would I would take a season and climb in the cockpit quick and go over there and fish i don't want to run a boat over there i want yeah. to go be the mate so yeah that's that's another one of the big big that's goals a, and big dreams that's a good one yeah yeah hey coming from just a small town north carolina boy didn't think you'd ever travel anywhere now i work a job that you know gives me gives me the opportunity at least to travel the world not only me but you know take my family along so i'm truly feeling blessed and and looking forward to the future and loving every part of this industry. It's awesome. You have to, man. We're fortunate to do what we do. For sure. Big time. Oh, I try I tell guys all the time, put a smile on, man. I mean, I know it's raining sideways. And yeah. There's always that that saying though, what is it? Uh and it doesn't really necessarily work for us all the time. What is it a uh, uh bad day of fishing is a a better day than being at work yeah. or whatnot and being at the office or something being at the office yeah so that that one doesn't always work for for a fisherman saying it because you know fishing is our our job but you know even on them them, them cloudy nasty days man I, i've learned that if i go ahead and put a smile on my face at the dock when everybody's complaining and nobody wants to go but i know i'm going i know my captain wants to go we're going our guys are locked in we're going I'm going let them know it's gonna be crappy y'all but i go ahead and put on a smile Y'all get ready to rock and roll and you go ahead and make that day fun. And it goes by the more you sit there in misery the rain's coming down, the fishing sucks, the more you, you dwell on it, the worse it gets. So yeah. put a smile on the, your face. Yeah. Make the best of it, fun. man. It could be worse. Have fun. No matter what you, we, we've already won by getting to go fishing. I don't care if you're paying to go or if you're getting paid to go, no matter what we've won. I mean, you know, that's the, the, the American dream to, to be able to go do things like this. You know, you go to other countries and you know, it's not, it's not so easily to go do, you know, we've got, uh, what is it? Over 150 some charter boats in this County. So, and we're a pretty small County. And, you know, that, that says a lot, you know, be able to have people coming here and, and fishing constantly, you know, you go to some of these other places, which I have not been, but they don't have as many charter boats or boats may not be as big or as fast or smell as good. So yeah, we're, we're very fortunate to do what we do and get to do them on the machines we do them on. Absolutely, man. I yeah. agree. Well, awesome, bro. I think we, uh, I think we crushed it. So I appreciate it. Look forward to getting back with you again, man. This was awesome. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, man. We'll get you back on. Uh, so thanks for listening, everyone. Derek Nelson uh, out of Manio, North Carolina. And we'll get you back on here soon, bro.